Throughout the years, the daily life of the fishermen of Lake Victoria in Kenya has become more and more of an ordeal. The reason behind this, the invasive water hyacinth, which makes access to the lake very complicated. I don't like this thing. You can't fish. So it, it will cover all over the ground. So for you to pass to the where it is not there. The water hyacinth, a species native to South America, appeared in Kenya at the beginning of the 1990s, carried by a river from neighboring Uganda. Since then, it has never stopped spreading. At times, it can cover up to 17,000 hectares, or 5% of the lake's surface. It can even end up blocking fishermen, like this boat, which has become a prisoner of the hyacinth. A few meters away, villagers are forced to tow the boat out of the water. As a result, the fishing sector is in distress. Production has dropped 30 percent in the past five years, and a number of small piers like this one have had to shut down. The head of the Fishermen's Association also believes the plant has led to a big drop in the number of fish in the water. With the water hyacinth and low oxygen, it is very difficult for the fish now to go through the natural biological process of reproduction. If nothing is done, then it's terrible because the lake is dying. The lake is dying because of this hyacinth. It is now a double challenge, stopping Africa's biggest lake from dying and helping thousands of fishermen keep their livelihoods. The problem has been around for 30 years, but no luck so far. According to this researcher, it's because the number of hyacinth plants doubles every two weeks, faster than any other plant. It's impossible to eradicate. What we can only do is to control. People have to learn to live with it. And by living with it means looking for alternative use. For the past year, these two dozen fishermen have realized that removing the hyacinths from the lake could also be profitable. It was a disaster for a long time before discovering that it can be used economically. When they can't get onto the lake, they're paid to collect the hyacinths, around 10 cents per kilogram. The idea comes from Jack Oyugi, a biologist born in the region. During the dry spell periods, you can also find animals trying to graze on the leftovers of water hyacinth. So this uh, uh, gave me the challenge that the animals can feed on this hyacinth, but there's something which is hindering them from not feeding fully to the hyacinth. After many years of research, Jack Oyugi was able to figure out a way to transform hyacinths. And it all happens in his little factory, just a stone's throw from the lake. The plant must first be dried for a week before it's reduced to powder in this machine. Now we are using a hammer mill to break it down to a powder. So the powder is used to produce animal feed by mixing with another raw material. The hyacinth contains proteins that allows it to be used instead of soy in the production of animal feed. Now this is a mixture, the complete feed. This is for poultry meal. The business offers products that are up to 30% cheaper than its competitors and is already profitable less than two years after it was launched. Learning to live alongside the water hyacinth and turning a profit, a challenge for all of Africa. The plant is found in more than 20 countries across the continent.